Hi guys, I'm Randy and today on VRS TV we're going to spotlight the Neptune Systems Automatic Top Off Kit or ATK which can be used as a standalone ATO without needing a Neptune Apex controller or when coupled with one comes with even more advantages. In this video we'll explore some of the ATK's unique features, what comes in the box, as well as how to get it set up and running on your tank. One of the main features of the Neptune ATK and most ATOs in general is that you'll no longer have to manually top off your tank by hand every day to replenish fresh water lost through evaporation. With the Neptune Auto Top Off Kit and its IQ Fill feature, you'll also get a system that begins to learn your specific tank's evaporation rates, which will allow it to automatically adjust internal safety parameters to keep it from running longer than what's typically normal. This not only saves your tank from overfilling on the off chance that the pump gets stuck on, but also saves on the life of the pump by shutting it down if your ATO reservoir runs dry. Along with that, you don't need to own a Neptune Apex Aquarium controller to use this ATK. You can set it up on any system and still get the same features like IQ fill and even audio and visual alerts should the water be too high or too low for an extended period of time. However, if you do couple the ATK with an existing Apex, you'll get the added ability to receive email and text alerts, as well as the ability to utilize additional Neptune accessories. Through the use of two optical water level sensors, a mechanical float valve, and the IQ fill feature, you essentially end up with over three layers of redundant safety measures to help keep your tank and investment protected. Finally, since only two of the included fluid monitoring module or FMM ports are used for the ATK's optical sensors, you get two additional ports to plug even more sensors, leak detection probes, or even Neptune's flow sensors. Let's take a look at some accessories that you can add to the auto top off kit that can really get this thing running at its full potential. As I mentioned earlier, you can use the two additional ports on the included FMM module for additional optical sensors like this, which come with or without a magnetic mount that allows you to mount them anywhere in the sump, tank, or more commonly the ATO reservoir, so you can get notified when the sump level is too low or when the reservoir needs to be refilled. You can also use the extra sensor ports for LD1 and LD2 leak detection probes so you can get notified through your Neptune Apex when water's not where it's supposed to be, as well as be able to turn off your ATO pump if that sensor gets triggered. This available fifth layer of redundant safety absolutely makes this ATK one of the most safest ATOs out there. Along with that, with the ATK connected to your Neptune Apex, you could use the extra FMM ports to monitor things completely unrelated to auto top-off, like implementing flow sensors to help you dial in the flow rates on things like reactors, skimmers, UV sterilizers, or even your return pump. If you're looking to use this ATK with your RODI unit or a large RODI water reservoir, instead of using the included PMUP, you could use the SV1 solenoid valve, which connects to quarter-inch tubing. Rather than power on a pump, this solenoid uses an automatic valve that opens and closes the line when water is called for. Finally, if you need a bit more length for your PMUP power cable or even the SV1 solenoid, there are DC24 extension cables available, which you can daisy chain together up to a maximum of about 50 feet. When you open the box of the Neptune Systems ATK, you'll see the Fluid Monitoring Module, or FMM, which has a 24-volt power supply port, a powered accessory port, four sensor ports, and two Aquabus connections, which are used to connect the ATK to the Neptune Apex. On the back of the FMM, you'll also see a handy mounting bracket that makes removing the module quick and easy. The kit also comes with the pre-assembled water level mechanism, which includes two optical sensors, each with cables about 117 inches long, a mechanical flow valve that will physically close the incoming water line, as well as a magnet to mount the assembly on acrylic and glass up to a quarter inch thick. The entire setup measures just under 3 inches tall and with the float valve attached is a bit over 6 inches wide. Outside of that you'll see the practical multi-purpose utility pump or PMUP that's capable of pumping water up to around 14 feet high which is typically more than enough to fit most common applications where you would need to push water to the sump or up to the top of the display tank. Also included is just over 13 feet of quarter inch orange tubing, a reducing coupler for the tubing to connect to the PMUP, and finally a siphon brake connection, which we'll see how to use later. The Neptune Auto Top Off Kit can be set up in no time and is so simple that you really only need a screwdriver to mount the FMM before it's ready to go on your tank. 
The first thing I like to do is mount the FMM in a location where the sensor wires and power cable for the PMUP will be able to reach. Also when mounting the FMM bracket, be sure to leave yourself about a half inch of clearance so you can easily remove and remount the module itself when needed. With the included push connect adapter fitting, you can connect the larger end to the output of the PMUP and a length of orange tubing to the other end. As best practice, you should install the push connect siphon brake near the top of the ATO reservoir in order to avoid a siphon from occurring when the ATO pump turns off. One thing to note here, the siphon brake fitting has a very small hole in the side and water will come out when the pump is on. With this in mind, you'll want to install it so that it's contained inside your ATO reservoir and not underwater. Now you can remove the compression nut on the 90 degree fitting from the float valve Insert the other end of the orange tubing and screw the nut back on while at the same time pushing the tube in. Once that's done, we can mount the magnetic sensor holder in the sump or even the back chamber of many popular all-in-one tanks. Just remember to set the bottom optical sensor where you want the water level to be so that when the water level falls below that sensor, the pump will turn on. If you find that the float valve gets in the way of where you want to mount the ATO, and if you're comfortable using the ATK without it, you can easily remove it by unscrewing the float from the magnetic bracket, reinstalling the 90 degree tubing fitting, and securing it in place with the nylon set screw. After you mounted the ATK sensors, you can plug the low level sensor labeled with a number one into port one on the FMM, and the high level sensor into port two. Plug the PMUP into the accessory port and the power supply into its plug-in and you're done. Moving on to setup and use of the Neptune ATK, let's first talk about how to set it up in standalone mode, which means we will not be using a Neptune Apex. And as I mentioned earlier, while in standalone mode, you will be able to get audio and visual alerts from your FMM module when it's functioning normally, when it is timed out, as well as when it's actively pumping water. When you first power on the ATK, you'll notice that the colors change on the LED indicator. When the LED is blue, your ATK is operating normally and is waiting to pump water when the sump level drops. When the LED turns green, that means it's currently pumping water to refill the tank until the water level reaches the middle of the low sensor. If the pump runs longer than five minutes, which can happen if the ATO reservoir runs dry or if the water level in the sump has dropped too much, an orange LED indicator will turn on and you'll hear an audible alarm from the FMM. An alarm in orange indicator LED will also occur if the water level reaches the high level optical sensor. Finally, if you opted to add additional optical sensors to port three and port four, you'll also get alarms when they're triggered. The port 3 sensor may be best used for high level alerts like when your sump is too high because it will trigger the alarm when the water level reaches the sensor. However, the port 4 sensor is best used for low level alerts like at the bottom of your ATO reservoir as it will trigger the alarm and shut off the PMUP when the water level drops below it. Now on to using the ATK when connected to the Neptune Apex which opens a few more features. The first thing you'll want to do is connect the FMM to the Neptune Apex using an Aquabus cable and check for firmware updates on both the Apex and on the FMM module itself through the Modules tab. With any necessary updates complete, you can click on the Tasks icon which looks like a clipboard and a piece of paper, choose the ATK setup option, and simply walk through the easy setup questions which includes programming any email and text alerts for the high and low level sensors. At the end of the setup, you'll see a breakdown of what you can expect from your ATK. Hit send and you're done. You can expand the features of the auto top off kit if you decide to add additional sensors to the open sensor ports. As you can see from the task screen, you can easily add an additional leak detection sensor, low level water sensor, even a flow sensor, and programming them is as simple as answering a few setup questions. Lastly, if you wanted to change out the included PMUP with the SV1 solenoid valve, you may want to consider adding a couple more redundancy features to provide you with the peace of mind that your tank in your home is protected in case anything should fail. That said, the ATK's built-in multiple redundancy safety measures should be more than enough protection to keep your tank safe. However, if you decide to hook up your ATK directly to an endless supply of water from your RODI unit, adding a couple more safety precautions isn't a bad idea. Adding a leak detection probe or two to the ATK can really help to make sure you're alerted in the unlikely event that the high level optical sensor and mechanical float valve should fail. Along with that, you can also program the Neptune solenoid to shut or close off the flow of water if any of those leak detection probes were to be triggered.
With a solenoid setup for your auto top-off, you could also add a secondary solenoid further up the line, which can also be programmed to close if a leak detection probe were triggered to act as a secondary solution to stop the water from flowing. One thing to mention here, if you wanted to add an additional solenoid to the ATK, you would need the latest Neptune Apex, which has additional powered accessory ports, or use a one-link module with its own powered inputs. As always, it's best practice to maintain our reef gear so that it continues to work for us for the long haul. For both standalone and Neptune Apex connected uses, periodically cleaning the ATK's optical sensors and mechanical float valve will make sure that they work consistently. Adding sensor and float cleaning to your maintenance schedule and cleaning them with some citric acid or vinegar solution and a brush will help to keep them from things like algae and precipitate buildup. Along with that, you could also occasionally clean the PMUP to keep it in top shape. And if your ATK is connected to the Neptune Apex, it's always best practice to stay on top of all firmware updates for both the Apex itself as well as any updates for the modules. Thanks for watching, and if you have any more questions that we didn't answer here, feel free to give us a call, send us an email, or hop on a chat. See you next time on BRS TV.